Hey guys, it's Tosa back with another video, and <laughs> and um today I will be bringing back the Tosa Analyzer series. So for those of you who were with me when I had around 400, 300 subs, you guys will know about this series. It's where um I analyze object show characters, BFB, Teapot, and Anime Insanity. But for now, we're just doing BFB and Teapot, basically Jack and Jellify characters. So um yeah, for those of you noobs, that's basically what this series is about. I have a whole playlist with eight other videos. I did people like Pin, Pie, Spongy, Flower, Blocky and Woody and you know I, I have a playlist so um yeah there's eight videos waiting for you guys for those of you who haven't watched it if you want to watch it but um yeah if, as you guys have read today's title I will be analyzing needles so let's begin okay so obviously we're gonna start from where she began which was BFDI when she was first well, when she first appeared. So, um, yeah, BFDI, Battle for Dream Island, the first season and the first object show, too. She was one of the 20 contestants that competed. I think she's one of the only characters to be in all seasons. But in BFDI, she was one of those characters that just relied on, like, a certain thing. Like, they only relied on one thing that they do or one phrase that they say. And the thing that Needle was was, don't call me needy. So, basically, her character was, if you call her needy then you will get slapped in the back of the head or just slapped in the face or slapped in general so it was kind of funny at first i got to admit but then after that after like episode four or five it just kind of ran old you know she wasn't really that that's basically all she did she was kind of a a mean character well she kind of balanced being mean and nice at the same time so yeah, Needle in BFDI, you know, wasn't the best of her, which is why I'm not really surprised that she was the sixth eliminated, kind of deserved it, honestly kind of deserved to be eliminated earlier, but, you know, she was just, she just relied on the whole don't call me needy thing, and it kind of got old pretty, pretty quick, so that's basically her in BFDI, and most likely the reason why she was the sixth eliminated. Now, we go on to her in BFDIA, where we see her start to change a little bit. I don't really think I've seen much of the don't call me needy thing. I don't really think I've seen that a lot. But, you know, she was in BFDI. She was kind of a calm person. I say she got smarter, if anything. She got smarter. She was always a nice character, honestly. It's just if if you called her or mispronounced her name, then she would change. But she was always a nice character, to be honest. And I didn't really see the don't call me needy thing in season two of her. She, she became smarter. She became a more helpful person, especially as we've seen in BFDIA episode five. You know, she was, she was a care I, I, not careless but she was a careful person i want to say but yeah you know she was she was pretty okay and also might i add this is when we start to see like actually see the needle pin and coiny duo form together together sorry um i i think i said in the Toast Analyzer's pin video that pin needle and corny like they all had kind of like the same character thing wise you know like the same character theme in season one they both relied on one thing then the season two they both uh, sorry all three of them they started getting better and then the season three you know they were at least at their peaks so I, I want to say that like Needle, her arc was don't call me needy. Pin was bossy and Coiny was basically the fight with Fiery. And now in season two, you can see them come closer together. You know, they become less, less annoying, I want to say. So I, I just wanted to add that. Now, she was in IDFB. She was one of the 22 contestants, but she didn't really play a big part. The only time we've seen her in the only episode of that season was the scene where she was with tennis ball and golf ball. And that scene kind of, that that has that scene has a little theory to it about whether golf ball is a time traveler or something. Maybe I might do a theory of that in the future. But yeah, rather than that, Needle hasn't really been, you know, she didn't really do anything in IDFB. We haven't seen much of her. She was a little... A little angry though, but um, yeah, IDFB, she wasn't, we didn't really see her that much. Now, it comes down to um, BFB, 
I mean, she was seen in one episode of T-Pop, but BFB, the first 16 episodes, you know, that's where we actually see the true Needle, or at least the developed Needle. Now, Needle, you know, she wasn't, she was, she didn't really get that much screen time, okay? Not like she did in BFDIA or BFDI, like, in BFDI, in BFDI, in BFB, sorry, she didn't really get that much screen time. We barely see her. She's like a background character. Like, she was treated like one of those, one of the new characters or the recommended character that didn't join the previous seasons. You know, we didn't, or at least I didn't see her that much. You know, she wasn't, she was just, but when we did see her, when we did see her, she was an okay character, I want to say. Like, out of her, her balancing the 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 whole needy thing that's dead at least so that's a good and bad thing because it was kind of funny but at the same time you know it wasn't really that good but when we did see her you know she was kind of shy a little bit like she didn't really develop that much she was pretty much just shy in the corner you know not really not really anything or you would see her but she didn't really say anything you know the only big thing that I want to say that I've seen from her is the scene where at the I think it I believe it was at the end of BFB 11 when um Needle her whole bot some a star came flying through the sky and Needle she um she became metallic I want to say like she was cartoonish but then she turned to like this metallic kind of body I think so yeah that's really the only thing she's got I mean right that scene hasn't really affected herself in the show and I think right before teapot she switched back I think I, I don't really know but you know that's rather than that scene she, nothing else has really you know she's she hasn't been really that much of a big character in the show. I mean, we do see her hanging out with Coiny and Pin sometimes, but rather than that, you know, she she's just meh. Can't really say much about her. Now, the last episode, well, the last season to talk about is Teapot. And um Teapot just like Guy B has one episode, but in Teapot, we see her with her little friend group, Coiny and Pin. You know, she kind of got dragged into the team like Pin with Coiny. But, you know, she didn't really contribute much. So her whole character in general is kind of like just a background character. Like in season one, she actually had something. She was memorable. But after that, after BFDI and on, you know, she she just became plain and a little bland, if I'm being honest. Just like that little shy, quiet girl in the corner at school. Everybody has that probably. No offense. But, you know. At least in BFDI, the whole needy thing, at least, you know, she had something. Like, she had an arc. And even though it didn't do her so well since she was the sixth eliminated, at least she had something that would make her a memorable character. And, yes, there are some, there are still some Needle fans around the world that see her, or at least in the Object Show community, that see her as their favorite character. They see her as heroic or things like that. But, really, she's just... After BFDI, she became kind of, actually, after BFDIA, she became kind of just plain, you know. Now, of course, guys, this is just how I see her, or at least how I think I see her from what I've seen from her so far. You know, she still has a long way to go in Teapot. That's why, I think that's one of the reasons why Jack and Jellify put her in Teapot, though. I mean, if I'm being honest, Teapot is really for the characters that are bland or for the characters that should develop more like perfect characters like Book. She she actually deserves to be in Teapot. And as Jack and Jellify said before, Teapot is going to, you know, it's going to be the big story arcs. That's why they had to spend the first place Teapot for the... to make characters develop and BFB for the funny side. And since BFB is over, may, mostly Jack and Delphi just have teapot left. So hopefully, you know, we get to see more screen time of her. I think that's why teapot has a larger cast, mostly because you, when you have a show with 64 contestants, you can't really focus or balance the time span that you spend on each mostly you just spend it on a few people and everybody gets to know them and they become overrated or underrated or something like that or mostly overrated and everybody else is underrated because they haven't really seen them that much so especially if that's your favorite character like someone like needle pie you know they they just ever since they've 
the the um the number of contestants gotten bigger. You know, a lot of less people have been getting screen time, especially the new recommended character that joined ever since BFP started. But um, yeah, season one Needle was probably probably the best of her, mostly because that's when we've seen her the most with the whole needy, don't call me needy thing. But then BFDIA, IDFB, BFB, and Teapot of so one, not much from her. So that's my take on it. Hopefully we could agree to disagree whether you guys like it or not. Hopefully you at least respect my opinion as I would respect yours. And um, yeah, thanks for watching. Hope you stay tuned for episode 10, which is the next one, if I do make one. Because I've I'm having some troubles, you know, with my computer and stuff. But yeah, thanks for watching and hope you guys stick around for another one.